Hello, hello. Hi, Ben. How you doing? Good, how are you doing? Yeah, doing all right. So, yeah, I started uh, just kind of filling out a few things. Um, and sorry, I haven't been able to review your message about yourself. I will do that today. Um, I have just been so swamped. Uh, I'm sorry to give that <laughs> excuse, but it's that's just the real, that's just what's happening right now. Um, but I will do that today. I'll put it on my calendar for an hour. Um, I don't know how, uh, if I'll be able to get through all of it, but what I will do is within that hour, I'll just submit the review and then you can at least start iterating on it from, from that point, if, if that's all right with you. Yeah, it, it shouldn't take you an hour. It's basically the um the google doc i just copied it over, it over. In, gotcha gotcha into markdown so you've seen 99 percent of it already so it shouldn't be any surprises there and it's okay. not that long so great great okay cool cool yeah i'll definitely take a look um today is there anything you want to call out i saw you had one um, um comment the only on thing there. that I had was just to be consistent. Right, what are we right. going to call the thing? <laughs> That's so that was kind of interesting. That was actually an internal discussion I had about a month, two months ago with, um, with my manager to DC. Um, let me get back. Like, let me talk to Andrea. I think this is something that Andrea, me, you, we, we all need to settle on something, but we also need to be careful. Um, you know, that, whatever names that we settle on isn't already widely used right um so naming things is hard right as we all know so yeah um, well i was trying to um even though it may be used you know we'll we'll stick the word cd events in front of it mm -hmm. so that will describe us doing it but right, right. what is what is um the cloud events call their broker i that was like I'm like, all right, if if the cloud events. Let me see. Um, I, do they have a cloud events play? Do they? I don't know if they have like a, a dedicated broker. I don't know though. Um, yeah, that's why I wasn't sure on how they. Um, how they refer to it because they must refer to it somehow. Right, right. Uh, I, think, I think they just probably call it broker to be honest because it's supposed to be interchangeable um but we probably want to give it an actual name though um because this is actually going to be an implementation um let me just search broker real quick broker. but if we if we call it um uh message brokers yeah event brokers Yeah. yeah. So. so look at um uh what were the other ones? Uh, uh look for router. Oh router. Oh gotcha. Router. Yeah, just router. They just call it router, vet routers. So they're going they're going in back and forth. Some event routers, middleware subscription. Right, right. But yeah, definitely consistency. Uh, I, I completely feel you on that. But yeah, let's let's come up with some names um, and some semantics. Okay, so that's a good call out. So let's actually add that as as um, uh, need consistent semantics. Uh, uh, semantic naming. <laughs> semantic na yes, exactly. Semantic naming of of this thing. <laughs> what do we call our message broker? <laughs> okay cool 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 um all right cool so i'll i'll respond to that uh i want to talk to um andrea and and didisi uh my manager um you know with some potential issues that potentially that cdf not really us but maybe potentially with cdf um because that's what uh, cd events is under so i need to make sure that we you know whatever we name we choose um or discuss you know it, it it's you know what are what are the no's basically what can't we use um yeah. and then from there we can kind of figure out um you know some names um Maybe that's something we can do for the next SIG event. Um, I will add a GitHub issue for this. We'll add GitHub issue for semantic naming. And we can vote on the appropriate names. Yeah, so I think I think that's that's a good start. Um, 
and I'm, a good call I'm, out. And I'm fine with anything. We just have to, just so when we talk about it, we're all saying the same thing and we're all, exactly. you know, doing it from the same point of view. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I agree 100%. Okay. Yeah, I really like that. All right. So I will go ahead and um, uh, make this an action item for me. And then um, one thing since this is going to be maybe potentially interesting for you, but in the spec SIG group, we talked a little bit about modeling language considerations for the SDK. So right now the SDKs uh, rely on JSON schema. Okay. But that's the extent of it. JSON schema does not have generators. I mean, like every generator that we use is all handwritten. I mean, specifically the Java SDK is completely handwritten. So like maintaining that, like just looking through that code base, it's like, pretty pretty big um as for if we use something that's widely used they have generators and they allow for metadata to kind of help facilitate what you want to generate if there's some specifics about it um so a couple that kind of came out of that was qlang proto and open api the thing that was mentioned about open api it's primarily you know, you know used to generate web services that's right. not to say we can't generate SDKs for it, but it might be kind of going against its common use case. Um, so I was curious if you had any um, opinions or even other modeling languages that you would like to see added to this list. Uh, no, I, I don't th think we need to... Um uh like you said the um the open api one we can make it fit into it but i don't think it's going to be i think we're going to bang our head on that one exactly. down the road yeah, yeah. even though it could take us a a, a certain distance mm. um but i would say that what we may want to do just to make our our lives easier for all we're ta talking about is generating um, like this, the schema and stuff like that, that we may want to just pick a language that has a good generator mm -hmm. <laughs> and use that as kind of like the, the one that we go in and it would have to be the language that we, let's say we're going to use go, um, yeah, yeah. goes, goes going to be the first SDK that gets updated um out of all of them you know you put rust at the bottom of the list yeah, let's yeah. say for example um and then you just go the the changes would first go through the golang uh, sdk that golang would then generate um the new schema that can be uh, consumed by the um the java one and stuff like that mm -hmm. um that may be an easier way to go now when when you go to the next step of having taken the schema and generating, um, you know, uh, code from the schema that becomes a little more uh, language specific. Yeah, yeah. Um, that we may need to. That's going to be a little bit harder. But that doesn't mean that we can't have the same Go program kick out four different things: one for Java, one for Python, one for um, you know Rust. Yeah, but yeah, we, yeah. we, we kind of have, we kind of do all the work in one place is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Consider using a single generator tool to generate all, or all code gener, all code generation for all SDKs. Um, what's your GitHub alias, by the way? Uh, uh, SB Taylor 15. All right. Perfect. All right. I, I really like this. Consider using a single generator. I mean, yeah, I, I, that makes it a lot easier because that means we maintain one code base for code generation as opposed to a number of languages. So I, I really like that solution. Um, so yeah, let yeah, so let's let's visit this. I, I think this is a good idea. We choose a language. We we write a custom generator tool to kind of help with that. If you know, or fork the generator tool that they have or you know whatever whatever the case may be but i think using a single generated tool to generate all the sdks um is is a, definitely a, the best approach in terms of scalability like for for what we're trying to do because like there's only so many of us so you know the least amount of work that we can do 
the better. So I really like this solution. So um, yeah, and and once you get the the pattern down, um, it's going to be a rinse and repeat. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, okay, cool, cool. I really like that. Um, all right, cool. So that was basically all that I had that I I really wanted to talk about. Like I said, I'll, I'll review your PR. I'll create that GitHub issue on semantic naming after I talk with um, Andrea and and Didisi on kind of figuring out what the limitations of the naming um, of, of names would be. Um, and then kind of like go from there. Uh, and then, like I said, in the next uh, implementation SIG, we can then finalize on what the consistency uh, of those names will be. Um, that way we can kind of like move forward. Um, yeah. But I, I don't think that should block your PR. We no, can always, it'll be just, yeah. it'll just be a little update to, exactly, up, exactly. to yeah. replace the word. I think it's only referenced a couple places. So okay, um, perfect. we're not going to, it's not going to be break the bank type of thing to make that small change. So we could actually do the PR and then just come back and uh, apply the name uh, as a second PR. Awesome. Perfect. I like that. Okay. I will say should not, should not block PR and could always be updated later. All right, yep. Perfect. I like that. Um, all right, cool. So that should be good then. Um, yeah. Was there anything specific that you wanted to talk about? I know um, I had one other thing I wanted to talk about, but, um, but if you had anything, um, you know, it's probably, this is probably a good time to talk about. Cause like the, the other, you know, like the other thing I want to talk about is like what the next, um, basically what the next proposal will be for, for implementations. Yeah. What the next steps are as well for the message broker once it's merged. Right. So kind of yeah. those two. So there's a, a second part to this, um, which is. So the first part is just getting the message broker out there. So, um, well, there's two parts, I should say. One part is getting uh, a message broker stood up um, mm -hmm. that we can start using for uh, basically all open source projects. Should be able to, in some way, connect to this message broker. Mm -hmm. So we can, so when Jenkins does a new build, um uh us as ortilius uh we have a a, a plug-in that we want to get notified that there's a new jenkins release for example so um that messaging between projects is what we'd want to uh kind of stand up and and demonstrate uh with a with a public message broker at that level i don't think it'll take that long to stand up um a, mm -hmm. a message broker uh to just just do some basic stuff and we could kind of keep it closed so yeah, we yeah. can say Jen jenkins ortelius and tecton or something like that yeah, you know yeah. you know start with a closed closed world at that yeah point. close approach yeah yeah i like that and then um, so that that gives us the message broker we can start sending events around between uh, some of the projects now the next bigger part of the the process um so let's assume that the message broker is up and running um or it's on its way there on a uh requirement side and design side is we have to get into the what I call active and passive um, uh, event generation. Mm -hmm. So an active um, event generation would be like a Jenkins plugin. Um, right, right. You know, there's a Jenkins plugin, there's like the Garrett, there's um, some of the web hooks, you know, so there are some what I call active um, event generations where you actually go in to a tool, configure it to start sending events, and we can have it, you know, send off to the our public um, message broker. Now, the other side of that is a passive one, where you don't go and ask a team to do any changes at all to their um, CI tools. So, the on the passive side is where we have to do more monitoring um and watching for things to happen so for example 
a new Golang package has been, uh, a release has been created on GitHub for mm -hmm. a Golang package. So there are APIs that we can go and look at a repo to see if a, you know, every hour we'll go out and see if a new release was published. Right, and right. then that that would then generate a release event for that repo without them ever having to do any changes at all. So that's that's the passive. Um, there there is a little bit of a middle ground. So I don't know if you're familiar with this, but we have an actual webhook uh, adapter, which is just a webhook that um, GitHub just plugs into, GitLab just plugs into, Jenkins just plugs into, and just Garrett um, and it just converts their uh, their API responses to CD events. So that's all right. that does. So that's but another I, approach. I believe you have to go and ask the project team to enable that webhook. Yes, yes. They would need to go into their settings, but I feel like that's easy to do. That's a lot easier to do um, than, um, um, you know, having them up, go in the full, like, up or having GitHub do it, right? Like, that, that's probably going to be way, yes. long, long, way down the road, right? Um, and the passive, the only issue I have with the passive way is that it doesn't really give you a good, um, like it doesn't happen in real time. So the metrics, like when people are looking at metrics, like it might not be as, um, it might not be as real time as some people might like it is kind of like what I'm getting at, but that's yeah. not to say we can't do it, you know, but there's definitely three approaches and I think we can measure and it could even be that, you know, the two approaches that you, oh, the one approach that you mentioned, which is the passive one. And then with this kind of this hybrid one where they, um, they don't have to change too much, but they don't have to really do much or change anything either. They just have to do that one setting. Um, and, and that's it. Maybe we can even have both solutions, you know, and teams can just kind of pick and choose whatever, if they care about observability and metrics, they can then go with the webhook adapter. If they're a little bit lazy and, you know, don't mind those metrics being a little bit off, maybe they go with the passive solution. You know, it, there, there doesn't need to be a definitive solution is what I'm saying. Like there could be yeah. multiple. So I think, I think that might be a good approach as well. So it kind of caters oh, yeah. to all audiences. Definitely. And, you know, when you look at the, the big picture, um, you know, Cloudbees, Jenkins, when Cloudbee runs the Jenkins for companies, they're running 90 million workflows a, a month. Right, right. So getting 90 million people to go in and add a webhook adapter uh, is, like you said, it would be you get more accurate information, but getting it to, to actually happen uh, is going to be a little bit more challenging. And that's why the passive, the pure passive um, is what I'm thinking of to be able to get a lot of benefit with zero um, uh, changes to those uh, for those repos, basically. Right, right. And, and and like I said, you know, I think I think we should have we should list both solutions because I mm -hmm. think yep. there are definitely going to be two people. Right. There's going to be people that are willing to make that effort and uh, to make those changes. And then you're going to have people that are like, oh, it's kind of a lot of work. You know, we'll just kind of, you know, go with the passive solution. However, the passive solution can also be a stand in until they start getting more users and customers to um to use the webhook adapter as well, you know, so that exactly. That be, so yeah, I think they're, you know, both have their place. We just need to kind of illustrate in documentation, you know, what that looks like, how you can basically, how do you onboard the CD events? You know, how do you get that into your, 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 you know, your systems? Well, this is a few ways. And I think providing multiple ways um, will definitely, uh, you know, entice, um, you know, the various different groups of people that, you know, that we have. So, so yeah, yeah. Um, and, and and just real quick on the um, on the spec side, we may need to add a field in there saying that this is you know where this this is a, a passive event, this is a middle tier event, or this is an active event. You know, just so people understand when they're looking at metrics that where how the metrics could be skewed because of the 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 how it's being produced. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I definitely think we can we can have something like that. Um, yeah, well, I mean, technically, there is a way to indirectly get that. Basically, the subject 
would be instead of the subject being strictly from GitHub, like you can you can have like a subject that says, "Oh hey, yeah, this, yeah, yeah." This come came from the uh, the polar or the passive, you know. So there's ways of doing it. If that's the right way, though, is is the bigger question. Um, you know, it doesn't hurt that you know maybe we update the schema. You know, maybe it makes sense to put it there. Um, I will bring this topic up in the next spec meeting. If if you're not present, um, I'll bring it up. But if, if you're there, feel free to bring it up. But I'll add it as an action item and, and we can talk about it there, um, seeing what people think. Yeah, I think hold off until we get further down the road um, in the requirements on the, the, the three tiers. Once we dive into the document and we have a better feel for where it's headed and how it's going to kind of be implemented so we have something mm -hmm. in the back of our mind then we'll know that we're gonna have to go change the spec or you know it's not going to be an issue i think it's too early to flush that out yeah I, I definitely think it's too early to flush out but i think starting the discussions might be useful okay. Okay. basically just like putting it in their brain you know this is what we're thinking about from the implementation side just so we're in sync like what i mean by that is you know, we don't want to just like drop a bomb on them. You know, like me and you were talking about this thing that could potentially change the spec. And then three months later, we're like, hey, this needs a change. It's going to affect all of the events, right? Because this is not a small change. It would affect all the events, you know, if it's a new scheming, uh, scheme field, right? right? So I think we want to at least plant the seed to kind of say, this is what we're thinking about. We haven't laid out all the details yet, but, you know, you know, just just kind of get an understanding, like, you know, within the next, you know, couple months, once we get everything kind of finalized, uh, we might need to revisit this and see, and, you know, and when we drop, you know, when we, when we um, talk about this in the, in the next SIG meeting, you know, Andrea or, you know, whoever's there might have a even better solution on, on how we can add this to the, to the schema. So I, I think definitely at least just bringing it up very slightly, but not as like a deep discussion will definitely be help and keep us kind of in sync with the two working groups as well. Yeah. And then on the kind of on the, the passive implementation, it will just have to give some high level ideas of how it could be, could work. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it really is going to be tool dependent. So, um, you know, GitHub, you can look at, if you have a GitHub token, you can look at, um, you can hit the APIs and look at releases and jobs and things like that. Um, whereas uh, something like Jenkins, you could actually go in and monitor the file system where it writes all the, the um, log output to. So there's different implementations based on, you know, the the CI system that mm. will need to, it's not going to be like, this is how, this is your design doc of how to go out and, and implement this. It's yeah. going to, it's going to actually going to um, take some work to figure out which, which way is going to be the best for which CI system. Yeah. Yeah. To start, yeah, CD events. Uh, and then we had the passive solution. Yep. Which is some polling system that creates CD events. Yep. And then we have the webhook adapter. And then we have the best case scenario company. Uh, active. Like GitHub. Yeah. Uh, I'll call it, yeah, active solution. Active solution. Um, and I'll call this hybrid. Well, it's kind of like in the middle ground, if you will. Yeah, this middle middle ground. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I'll put active at the very top, and then yeah, I'll put in the animation like that. Or that works. Whatever. Yep. Some polling system that creates a CD event, uh, and then like GitHub, a uh, company like GitHub fully implements implements a CD event. Uh, um sender i guess cd events sender <laughs> producer uh, there we uh, producer producer yeah yeah person perfect um cool all right so i'll bring this up in the next sig uh we'll add um this talking point in the spec sig uh to stir the pot all right cool 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 
Um, all right. Yeah, I really like that. That's definitely a good, um, you know, call out, um, you know, thinking about long term, you know, how can we get people to join fast and easy um, is another another benefit of that. Um, and another thing too, the webhook adapter could also be this polar because it already has all the conversion logic. So basically, all we would be doing is instead of, you know, listening for the web because the, the API is the same, you know, when it sends the event is that we would just do, instead of it being a post request, it would just be a get request. And then we'd get the same response and then just convert it. So it might make sense to put it there. I can't say that. I can only say that about GitHub though. I have to be honest yeah, because yeah. it might be different for all the other systems. So, okay. I think some investigation is needed once, once we get there, but yeah. And, and just so you just to kind of plant this seed is it's going to be a little bit trickier when you, so knowing when a, or like in GitHub, when a commit happens and when a workflow starts, that's all, that's pretty, that's pretty easy. You can look at the APIs and look at the Git, Git repos and stuff like that. Or even when a release is published, you know, all that stuff, but in the workflow, you don't know if a Docker build was done or yeah. a S bomb was generated or Providence was created. Um, all that's going to be looking at um, log files and parsing log files to figure out if those events exist, mm -hmm. which is going to be the more the, the trickier part down the road on the on the on, even on uh, actually it happens on all three of these, um, you know, because what we'll actually need to do is we'll need to in the long term, we'll need like a, an active for Docker. So we we'll have to talk to the Docker guys and the build kit um, to have them start. So the compilers themselves and NPM and the package managers are going to have to start producing these events. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, long story short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think so. I think there's some ways we could probably um, bypass that. Well, not bypass it like completely, but there's some ways about that we can kind of mitigate it to get those events. It's going to be a little bit tricky. But I think we can do it. Um, so I'm not too worried about it. I mean, like like I said, like the best case solution, which is is the active solution. So if we can get like Docker, whoever, you know, to start sending events, fantastic. But on, you know, we live in the real world, right? And <laughs> we know that's not gonna happen. So um, so yeah, I think I think we will be able to solve for that. Um, and you know, we can approach that bridge when we get there. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think, you know we definitely need to answer these questions at some point, but I think, I think right now, I think just starting with like, just at least from, from the SCM, the entry point, the source control side of it first, and then kind of like waking, working our way down the uh, SDLC to kind of, you know, until we hit a road bump, then, um, then we can kind of like dive into it a little bit more. But I think, I think we're doing a good job. I think we kind of laid out, I mean, just from this conversation alone, we've kind of laid out, I you know a lot of ideas, um, you know, what, what the next steps are for the message broker, what the implementation is going to potentially look like, you know, so I think there's a lot of good conversations being had here. Um, so I think what I want to do is we need a process of, we need a, I guess a, we need a document, some sort of RFC or something that says once a proposal is merged on some new technology or some piece of serve or some service, some software that we, we are going to write, what is that going to look like? What are the next steps? What are the right steps that we need to take um, in order for this to, to happen? Um, so I think that needs to be written. Um, I mean, we don't need, that doesn't need to be a blocker for, for this, but I'm just saying that needs to be written. So, you know, when the next person comes on with a proposal and we mer they merge it in, um, you know, there's like a clear set of steps that they can take knowing what, what, what is a good idea to think about when you're implementing something, et cetera, et cetera, like linters, et cetera, like what to use. Um, and, and I think that will be um, kind of helpful in the long run with like yep. maintainability. So, um, but yeah, uh, cool. I really like that. All right. Um, I think there's a lot of good stuff here. Um, okay, cool. Uh, was there anything else you had, Steve? I mean, that's nope. pretty much. All right. That, awesome. Awesome. That, that's it for today. 
All right, cool. All right, Steve. As always, right. thank you again. Uh, I will review that uh, later. Well, probably in a few hours. I have literally a bunch of meetings until yeah, literally three hours from now. I'll be free. But yeah, what three hours from now? I'll I'll ping you, or I'll just ping in CD Events channel that I, I reviewed it, and then um, uh, and then you can uh, you know take a look. Sound good? All right, cool. All right, awesome. All right, again, thanks again, Steve. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Later. All right, bye.